You're watching The Daily Decrypt. Welcome to Currency Competition. I am your host, Amanda B. Johnson, and today's episode is brought to you by the Merkel. Could a digital currency, a cryptocurrency, run without a blockchain? Such was my question for MadeSafe's Paige Peterson. Without any further ado, here she is. Well, Paige Peterson from MadeSafe, tell us uh, a bit about who you are and and what you do at MadeSafe before we dig on into the software. (laughs) My name's Paige. I've been working at MadeSafe for um, almost two years now doing communication and outreach and kind of community community building. I was doing a little bit of web development, um, but kind of have been focusing more on the outreach, especially now as we're starting to introduce actual software, um, that that role will be heightened a lot. So yeah, essentially I'm communications, um, go to events and speak at events and uh, talk to interested parties, uh, users that would uh, want to use the network just to you know, uh, store data and whatnot, but also for developers that want to build on top of the platform. Right on. Well, then let's get, um, as you said, some releases have been coming out. Let's get a a status update as of today of what is available to use as far as MadeSafe software goes and what is it actually doing right now versus what it, what may be available in a month, two months. Right. So a couple weeks ago, I guess two weeks ago uh, from yesterday, we released the official uh, launcher, which is essentially the user interface to connect to the network. So we haven't yet released the actual, uh, you know, client for hosting a node on the network itself. Uh, Right now it's uh, in a testing phase. So part of that testing phase is being able to have the team control ev- all of the nodes, which is about 50 nodes right now. Uh, they've been going, they've been saying in between 50 and 100, but I think right now it's at 50. Um, and kind of just getting that all squared off before releasing it into the wild, essentially, and letting anyone host a node on the network. Um, it makes it a lot easier to, you know, wipe the whole network and uh, kind of start over and some critical bugs in in that before we want to launch the you know user hosted node. So we released uh, essentially what is the client node. So they're in the MadeSafe network. There's two different nodes. There's the client node and a network node. A network node is the nodes that are hosting and routing data. And then the client node is one that the user, the client, interacts with. So if you're if you're wanting to host node, uh, host data and also interact with the network uh, with your own data, then you would essentially be running two different nodes. There's a client node and a network node. Okay. So we release the client node part. That's essentially what it is. Got it. And then yesterday we released the API, the beginnings of the API, so that developers can start working with the network that exists right now. So it's still closed off, but you will you can essentially start building apps or integrating existing apps so that it uses the storage cap- uh, capabilities of the network. So there's oh. a very minimal API right now. It'll obviously expand as we add more features such as messaging and whatnot, but um, it's definitely it's ready to go, and we definitely want to see some developers start playing with it as soon as they feel comfortable. It's it's pretty easy to understand because there's um, not a ton that you can do uh, without some of the features that we plan on integrating mm-hmm. in the near future. But it's essentially being able to put data to the network, you know, authentic, have a user authenticate to the network, uh, retrieve their data, store new data. Uh, public or private data, things like that. So that's essentially what we have right now. And then the next step is, you know, obviously fixing bugs and various things. Um, but the next main step is getting the network nodes uh, able to be hosted by users. It'll still be a test network at that point, And we'll still have kind of some logging capabilities that will be 
removed when there's a kind of more official launch of the network. Um, but uh, it'll still, we'll, we'll be in a test for a little bit, uh, a little, little bit launchable. So I have a question. So I uh, registered an ID. I got the launcher, right? The, the Yeah, I launcher. saw that. Yeah, so, cool. So even though it's, so even though it, it's technically still in testing, like like my ID, will it stay or is my ID going to be wiped and I'll have to re-register it and hope that someone else doesn't take the daily decrypt? Um, so the, the first, uh, if you installed it like in the first week or something, so it could have even been wiped again. But yeah, it's been wiped at least once Shit. and perhaps twice. So <laughs> kind of plan on a weekly wipe until <laughs> um until essentially the nodes are hosted by users because you can't really wipe the network when the nodes are hosted by users so okay. um and yeah well this uh this leads me into the the main the meat that i wanted to talk about today because i just find i really have no idea how to even envision the made safe as as you may or may not know, viewer, there exists a made safe coin which um, was used primarily as like a, a funding vehicle and to represent ownership um, in the network's usefulness uh, when it launched in the future. Made safe coin is a colored coin on Bitcoin, uh, living on the Master Coin protocol. And when when was that launched? Page remind me. Uh, so we did the crowdfunding whole thing in mm -hmm. April of 2014, so okay. almost two years ago. Okay, so two years ago, this colored Bitcoin was created, and uh, its value ever since has been reflected in people's anticipa anticipation of what the made safe network's value and usability would be. And so I meet Paige um, at Liberty Forum a couple of months ago, and she, um, I actually went to your presentation page and I was going to like ask a question in the Q and A saying like, so how will this colored Bitcoin, this made safe coin um, be usable on the made safe peer to peer network protocol itself? Um, but before I could even ask that question, you basically said, oh, and by the way, like made safe coins as they exist as colored Bitcoins now, uh, are intended to be like basically burnable, transferable for this thing called Safecoin, which yes. is a blockchain less currency intended for the made safe network. Like, <gasps> how does that even? <laughs> you lie, Paige, you lie. No, it's true. Um, so essentially, uh, yeah, so to reiterate, uh, the people that own made Safecoin right now, when the Safecoin, at, you know, the network is live and the Safecoin is implemented, it'll essentially be a trade one for one. So you'll get one Safecoin for one made Safecoin. Um, that'll be perhaps a complicated process. I don't know. I don't know the exact details of how we're going to do it, but um, it, it's essentially like that. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be too hard. Maybe it might be a little bit of manual effort uh, during that, during while everyone's kind of doing it all at once, but who knows. So to get to Safecoin, it's essentially using the, the language and the routing on the Safe Network to, uh, to move the, the Safecoin around. So we don't use a blockchain at all for anything. So all of the data on the network is treated um, very similar. So the way that you would perhaps um, give someone else permission to, to view a piece of uh, data that you have stored on the network would be cut a very similar process that you would have of sending a piece a safe coin to another person. So instead of getting a global consensus, you're using uh, this essentially new consensus that we've built, which is based off of the network infrastructure, which is a DHT. So no, it's essentially a, a DHT is a distributed hash table. And that means that it's a table of hashes where the hashes are distributed. So not everyone has every hash. It's like localized. You only store what you need to know, essentially. So 
Uh, you're only storing information about nodes that are kind of nearby you in this in this network. And whenever I say nearby in the in this sense, it's not geographically nearby. It's nearby in the namespace. So you know we could you could be uh, node. 14 and I could be node uh, 20 and we could be sort of nearby each other in this namespace but we could be on completely opposite sides of the world so the and um, it's essentially based on uh, generating a, an ID every time you log on to the network as a node so you're essentially given a random ID in the network which is how we can disperse the the names and the IDs as much as possible around the world. So and now has the sending of, of safe coins been simulated within the made safe testing or is this is this even more experimental than that? So the safe coin implementation is based off of a kind of a lower level implementation of messaging. Mm -hmm. So and this uh, this I should also say that there are two kinds of data on the SAFE network. There's data that you're uploading. So you upload a file, it gets chopped up into chunks and encrypted, and that data is spread out throughout the network. It's That's called immutable data. You're not able to change the data. Uh, and if you were to say, want to upload a new version of that data, uh, that piece, that file, then you would essentially be uploading a new uh, a whole new file because it's based off of hashes and uh, as we know in Bitcoin lands uh, a little bit of change in a piece of data creates a completely different hash so uh, it's that's called immutable data and then there's structured data uh, which is mutable data that uh, people who have authorization to mutate the data or change the data can um, update it with whatever they need. So this is how you essentially create tokens or any sort of asset that you would want to be able to exchange between peers on the network or users on the network. And that is not um, chopped up into chunks because it's, it's a small enough piece of data that you don't need to chop it up. You just encrypt it and store it uh, a couple times redundantly so it doesn't get lost. And in that way, um, you can have special special characteristics so that you can change these parts of data. So therefore, if we're talking about SafeCoin, uh, it's just a piece of data that has the signature, the cryptographic signature of the previous owner and the current owner. And as soon as the current owner says, I'm sending a message to change, to tell the, the nodes that are in charge of this, uh, of kind of making sure that this uh, this safe coin is secure and not changed by anyone else but me. Once I send my uh, signature to them saying, I want to send this to a new person, the nodes that are in charge of that uh, piece of data, such as the safe coin, will change the signature so that the previous signature gets wiped and then the person that just sent it is the new previous signature and then so it's essentially it's essentially uh kind of like digital cash where we're kind of it's it's easy to kind of relate to that because there is no kind of trail of um trail of payments unless per perhaps if you opt into a third party thing that would track uh the ids of a coin but um, that's okay. completely optional. Let me ask, how how many safe coins will there be? Oh, there's like, okay, it's like 431 billion, something around there. And is that like the same number as the current number of made safe coins? No, made safe coins, there's only 10% out in existence because there's... Uh, the half part of the network is to use these coins to incentivize people to host the data. So if you're okay. if you're a network node, then the network will essentially create these bits of data, and you enter into a sort of lottery. And uh, well, you don't enter. The network just essentially 
awards you SafeCoin um, in proportion to how much people are successfully able to get from your your node. And this 431 million or or whatever it is, is that is that a hard cap forever? Can I always yeah. feel confident that that my shares mm -hmm. uh, in SafeCoin will not be diluted? And and if so, uh, without a blockchain, is it is that somehow still provable with the code? So um, yes, you you have as much faith in the number of safe coins not increasing as you have the same faith as the number of bitcoins not increasing. If the you know the core team decides to go rogue and change the numbers, like obviously there's going to be like <laughs> no, but I mean, well, it could technically happen on for both bitcoin or made safe or any other cryptocurrency right but then people would revolt and fork and you know it wouldn't it wouldn't stand so it's got the same probability as bitcoin increasing in amounts okay. um and then to answer your second point um there's it's it's a little trickier to um to guarantee the existence of a coin or who owns the coin if you're also implementing a, like a network that is geared towards privacy. So one of the main goals of the SAFE network is to implement a completely private network that can't be trackable. And that's essentially like privacy is the opposite of accountability, right? They're both good in certain for certain use cases. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, blockchains are essentially not private at all. And therefore, it's a lot easier to essentially check who has what coin and to make sure that everything's OK. So in order for the safe network to kind of guarantee that perhaps a, a coin isn't double spent, it uses a completely different set of logic, which is based off of the DHT which uses essentially the nodes that are nearby um, a piece of data. So say we'll use SafeCoin again as an example. Um, each SafeCoin will have an ID, um, just as every node has an ID, just as every file chunk has an ID on the network. And that ID essentially dictates which um, which nodes are responsible for keeping track of it. So instead of a global blockchain network keeping track of everything, the nodes in the MadeSafe, or I should say the SAFE network, MadeSafe is the company, the SAFE network's the network. The nodes uh, have specialized uh, essentially personas or roles to keep track of uh, the data that they're responsible for, and which is based off of their distance in this DHT, which sounds uh, like what if you know you want to, you're a bad actor and you want to double spend, or perhaps um, if someone's trying, if, if say you want to kind of have a good chance of getting all, being the owner of all of the nodes surrounding a particular safe coin. Um, which is essentially a civil attack, being able to flood the network with uh, nodes so that you can at least take control of part of the network. Um, this, this worry is never, you can't really ever remove it completely from a decentralized network, just as Bitcoin has its own problems with people being able to flood the network. And it's not really the same mapping. It's not really called a civil attack with, if you're, you know, doing a 51% attack on a blockchain, but it's kind of a similar idea where um, you, the best, you do the best you can, you can't ever 100% guarantee that someone won't be able to attack a network, but you put in as much uh, difficulty as possible. So, and, and also like reduce incentives. So if perhaps you, um, you, flood the network with all of these nodes and then you only like are able to change a small like you're only able to affect like one safe coin that probably isn't worth it 
So it's about balancing the difficulty of doing it and disincentivizing against it. And there's a few things that go into the security to prevent being able to surround a node or surround a piece of data with these with your nodes. But it comes down to the fact that nodes are given random IDs when they join the network. They don't get to choose where they are in the network. And, um, and for most interactions that would kind of, that would say you're you know, sending a, a safe coin or whatnot, most these interactions require two groups of consensus. So you're not only getting one group of nodes come to consensus and say, okay, this can happen. Now we need to send this and get permission from another group of nodes that also needs to come to consensus. So that essentially makes it even harder to do. So say you have, say a, a group is 32 nodes the closest 32 nodes to a piece of data. And the consensus requires, say, 28 out of 32 nodes, because you know maybe four of those nodes are bad actors, and you, just, you don't want to have to like get consensus a bunch of times. You just want to be able to disregard a few nodes that maybe they go offline at that exact moment or something. So you get 28 out of 32 nodes, which is a really secure uh, proportion that we've been able to measure. And then, so that's about 88% that you would need to kind of flood the network to be able to, um, to kind of know that you'll be able to attack something. But when you add on a second group of consensus requirement, you're essentially doubling that. So that is almost like that's over 150% of the network that you would need to flood. So you need to say, okay, the no the network is this big. I need to have that much and then, you know, 50% more. So hmm. it's just pushing the, you know, the probability of attack to a really, really low standard. Hmm. So, I mean, would there, because I mean, that makes it sound like I wouldn't even say I want I had a safe coin and I wanted to double spend it. Would it be correct to say first I would have to somehow identify which node IDs uh, are are the are in charge of tracking that safe coin, and second I'd have to spin up two completely different like quorums of nodes say two quorums of 32 and i would somehow have to hope that when i spun up those nodes that the safe network would randomly give me the exact ones that i needed in order to be able to double spend like the exact safe coin that i wanted to double spend. exactly yep that's exactly what what hmm. i was trying to say yep <laughs> so <laughs> okay well and I, that's kind of that i guess uh before you go on that's a similar process that we're doing with all data on the network as well so say someone else wanted to attack a piece of data that they know is um you know maybe there's some you know state sanctioned criminal and they're trying to censor some piece of data they would have to do a very similar process in order to um, say, delete a piece of data or anything. And now let us switch gears to like, uh, like a sort of currency related question of SafeCoin, which is to say, say the value of one SafeCoin went to the equivalent of like three US dollars. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to pay you like a dollar fifties worth of SafeCoin. Could I ever send you half a SafeCoin? Uh, in the current implementation, no, but that's definitely kind of, that's on the roadmap for uh, future looking at. But with the such a high amount, uh, we're not in a rush, like since there's, you know, uh, essentially. That would be a half, good problem to have, basically. Es yeah, essentially half a bill, uh, sorry, half a trillion, or yeah, half a trillion coins about. Um, that's essentially not going to be... A problem for now because you know bitcoin's obviously only 21 million and um 
I mean, yeah, exactly. It would be a good problem to have, and it's something on the roadmap, but we're not, uh, we're definitely considering other things are more important to deal with right now. Mm -hmm. um, would such a thing, just out of my own curiosity, would such a thing be like technically feasible though? Like, could you, could you like, I don't know, I don't, could you like cut a message in half? Uh, I've heard it's possible. I don't know the, the details though. David Irvine, who's the founder, said it's possible and it's just not on the immediate roadmap. Um, there, there could be an, a brief explanation that he gives somewhere in the community forum that we have. He go, kind of frequents there a lot. Um, and well, let's tell people about like, that. Where, yeah, where's so, the community forum? Where can people learn more? The community forum is um, forum.safenetwork.io. And this is a forum that's not run by MadeSafe. It's run by, I'm actually, I'm technically an admin, but um, everyone else on the moderation and admin team are just community members. And I'm kind of just there um, as a sort of a way to balance things out to um, have someone from the MadeSafe team that, uh, but not having everyone, you know, not in charge of the forum at all. So it's completely community run. Uh, but we we use it uh, internally for all for most of our messaging to, um, to 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 the outside world right now. We post weekly developer updates every Tuesday. So yesterday we posted one, and that was where we announced the API. Um, and yeah, so if uh, not to not to flood David with a lot of uh, new uh, forum posts, but He's, he's very responsive on the forum, and if you have a dire question, he'll probably respond to it if, the, if like someone else in the community doesn't get to it first. Hopefully we can get to it first, but um, it's a very kind of tight-knit community um, that's over the past month or two has been growing really fast, uh, perhaps because of the coin price increase, but I assume I more of that. Yeah, I think that I think that's probably getting people's attention, but I like to think that people are just like <laughs> not as interested in that as the uh, actual, you know, decentralized internet part because that's what's really exciting to me. Well, very good. Well, thank you, Paige, for your time, and uh, yeah, I hope to get an update from you uh, as more software releases uh, come out in the future. Of course, yeah, just let me know. Okay, bye. Bye, thanks, Amanda. Today's episode is brought to you by The Merkle, a cryptocurrency and blockchain news hub with regular technical analyses of all of the top coin networks. The Merkle also covers the fintech space, covering business maneuvers and partnerships, as well as product releases. You can find it yourself for free at themerkle.com. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for watching. And I hope you come back tomorrow. Have a good day. First, we saw a presentation by MadeSafe, a software project to decentralize the internet that's been 10 years in the works.